Towns and villages grow up where roads meet or where a river has to be crossed. Bally de Hob is one such village where the road from Skibbereen to the Mizzen crosses the Rathruan. The old street with its plaster fronted houses exemplifies the Irish tradition of bright colours, often in remarkable combinations. An air of prosperity is evident from the well maintained frontages. Here, where a building was destroyed by fire, there's an excellent opportunity for rebuilding in the handsome local style, retaining the line of houses which give Ballydehob and other villages of West Cork the special charm which is much admired by visitors. The original street climbed breathlessly over the hill. In the mid-19th century, an easier route was constructed for more sedate coaching travellers following the northern contour. This is now the main thoroughfare, and very fine it is. There are very few shop fronts with inappropriate lettering or mass-produced plastic signs. Bally de Hob has nothing which could be grandly described as architecture, except perhaps the churches. These are simple in design, making their mark modestly on the landscape. The Catholic Church crowns the hill and looks out over the village and the river valley. The kind of village which we can describe with some pride as being supremely Irish. In fact, this Roman-looking viaduct is what remains of the Skull and Skibbereen Railway. And what could be more Irish than that? Bally de Hob is so typically Irish, in fact, that a number of discriminating foreigners have discovered it and have repaired old buildings long disregarded by the local people. These restorations add to the well-kept appearance of the neighbourhood. Jack Pollard is a local resident. Bally de Hob is remarkable in that the frontages of the shops, the faces of these frontages, each one is a, an, a unit in itself. Uh, they do not run into each other uh, as they do in other towns. Uh, each one has a balance, a scale, uh, an individuality of its own and each one adds up to the character of the whole street. This indi individuality comes from two factors. Number one, the topography of the street. The street has a, a, quite a steep gradient. This gradient ensures that uh, to keep each fascia horizontal. The builder had to ensure that uh, each end of each fascia was at least a foot higher off the street level than the other end. It meant then that these uh, fascias did not meet up with each other. They're not in one continuous line as you find them in other towns where the ground is level, each one is a complete unit and uh, this gives them an individuality that they would not have on level ground. The other factor is Bally de Hobb shopkeepers live on the premises. Part of the premises, even on the ground floor, are living quarters, which means that uh, part of the premises only are used as the business sector. Many people ask whether the decision as to the colouring of the houses is a concerted effort. Well, it isn't. Each householder decides individually on his own choice of colour. No meeting has ever been held. No effort at cohesion has ever been made. It is usually the lady of the house, I think, that decides on the colour. She uh, picks her own colour and without reference to her neighbour and uh, I think that in itself adds to the general effect. <laughs> 